for completing this assignment, you're going to want to have a big table to work on, whether it's a kitchen table or a table that you have out in your garage or in your room. Ideally, you'll want something that's about an arm length deep, so this is about three feet deep, and then anywhere from like five to six feet long. The tools that you'll be needing will be your matrix paper. You're going to want to have your clear 2 inch by 18 inch ruler, also a soft measuring tape. This is the number 17 clear French curve ruler, some paper scissors, a pencil and a green color pencil, as well as your pencil sharpener. Also, you're going to want to have some tape. Make sure that it is the magic tape. That way you can write on top of this and you can also iron on top of this. Uh, you'll also want to have a big white eraser, and if you make any mistakes with the color pencil, you might need some of this white-out tape to cover it up. If you want to reference a textbook while we're using these techniques, you can refer back to Pattern Making Made Easy from Connie Crawford. Inside of here, we're going to go to the chapter for the basic bodice draft. The matrix paper that I'm going to use is 48 inches wide and they have it set up where the numbers go with the width of the paper. What I'm going to do is for my front and my back I wanted somewhere around 24 inches. Since this is 48 inches wide what I can do is I can just cut this in half and I'll have my front and my back. So basically now I have two pieces of paper, 17 inches wide by 24, and this is plenty big for doing our draft. Now let's take a closer look at our paper. We want to have it where the matrix numbers are upright. Now this one here on my right hand side will be the front draft, and this one here is going to be for the back draft. Let's focus on this front one first. What I want you to do is, having the numbers upright, I want you to come over to the first row of numbers, and we're going to cut right through the middle of those. Now, after you finish cutting that off, save this thin piece of paper, and we're going to use this later for doing some measurements. Now come from this right side here into the very first row of letters and numbers that you can see and we're going to fold this paper right on there. So I'm folding perfectly right in the middle of all of these numbers. So basically I've done one inch fold here on the right side of the paper. Now let's take our back piece and we're going to do the opposite. So get your back piece set up where the numbers are upright. And then here on your left hand side, come into the first row of numbers and dots. And we're going to cut those exactly in half. And again, save this piece of paper for later, and we're going to use it to do some measurements. Now, from this left-hand side, come into the first row of dots, and let's fold that. So now we have, for the back piece, the left-hand side here is folded under an inch, and the front piece, the right side, is folded under for one inch. Now for this video, we're going to focus just on the front, so go ahead and move this off to the side, and we'll get to that later for the second video. Now again, so this is the numbers upright. Go ahead and take this and rotate it to your right side, and the fold should be facing towards you. So take out a sharp pencil and your ruler and come down here to the fold in the paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in one, two inches. Or you can see here, there's two rows of numbers. And 
And on this second row of numbers, go ahead and draw a line all the way through. Now up here where the numbers are upright, starting from the top, I want you to come down three inches. So come in one, two, three rows of dots and numbers. And let's go ahead and draw a line in here. And here we drew this line all the way into the fold. Go ahead and erase it going towards the fold. And right here I want you to write top. Now this is literally the top of our pattern piece. So again, here's all of our numbers upright. Up here is going to be the neck area. And as you travel down the pattern piece, we're going to have the waist. Now let's bring this back towards us again so the fold is closest to you and the top is here on your right hand side. What we need to do is from the top of our uh, from the top of our pattern piece, we want to measure down the longest measurement that we have. So that's going to be from the shoulder at neck going to the waist at center front. So that came out to 16 and three quarters. So starting here from the top, I want to measure heading down going along this center front line, 16 and three quarters and mark that here at the waist. At this waist location, I want you to draw a short line for about half of an inch, add an arrowhead and the word waist, and the number zero. And this is going towards the fold in your paper. Now that I have waist plus zero written down here, I can come back up to the top and let's write down 16 and 3 quarters. The next measurement I want to do is going to be from the waist at center front and then I come up here to center front at the neck and it's 14 and a half. Now we can measure from the waist going 14 and a half inches up towards the top and this will be our new neck. Draw a short line towards the fold of the paper, add an arrowhead, write the word neck and 14 and one half. Now that we know the neck location, we want to find our measurement for the center front neck out to the shoulder armhole ridge. Center front at the neck, and we're going to come out here to the shoulder armhole ridge area. And I'm getting seven and one eighth. What we can do is come up to the top line, so the top of your pattern piece, and we're going to measure out seven and one eighth. And here at seven and one eighth, I want you to square down a two inch line. And also we're going to write seven and one eighth and add an arrowhead going right to that line. So again, from the top, we went out one seven and one eighth, and we drew a two inch line heading down square with your pattern piece. And then we labeled it seven and one eighth. The next measurement is gonna be from center front at the waist, going across her bust and out here to the shoulder armhole ridge. For this measurement, we wanna start with our ruler zero at the waist, and then we're going to measure out towards that armhole ridge, and we want to pivot our ruler to where it's hitting 16 and 3 quarters right along that armhole ridge. Circle that location as well, draw a light line heading back to the waist at zero. Down here at the waist, Along that line, let's add a arrowhead pointing down towards the waist, and up here we'll write 16 and 3 quarters. The next thing I want to find is back up here, we have a shoulder slope angle. 
Now here's my two bodice pieces that I already had on the dress form, and this is the front. And you can see if I follow center front right along here, here's the neck and the waist, the shoulder has a slope angle to it. We want to know the distance from the armhole ridge out to the neck. And the measurement I'm getting is five inches. So come up here to the top and the neck, and across from the neck we have the neck at the shoulder ridge location that we just circled. And what we're going to do is, starting from this location, we're going to measure out five inches. And then we're going to pivot our ruler until it hits right along this top line. Once you find that location, put a dot there and circle it. And let's draw a line to connect these two dots. And then just double check your measurement again. This should be five inches. This new shoulder angle and these two dots are more important than this top line and this, this short line that we have here. So what I want to do is I want to erase some of this line here as well as here. So now our main focus is this shoulder angle right here. And I want you to write the word shoulder. Now take a look over here where we have the top line and the neck. The neck area is more important than all of this information over here. So what we're going to do is the center front here along in between the neck and the top line, let's go ahead and erase that. And this top line heading out to the shoulder angle, let's erase that as well. So now we can clearly see the space between the neck and the top and the top and that shoulder ridge. There should be no lines right here. Now bring this back over to where the fold is closest to you. This is your center front, here's your waist, here's your neck. Now since we erased these lines in this area, the most important area is here between the waist and the neck on your pattern piece. Take out a strip of your paper and starting with the edge down here at the waist, measure all the way up to the neck and put a mark on the strip of paper right here at the neck. Then carefully fold this in half. So now along your pattern piece we can find the center fold right here in the middle. At this halfway point, draw a short line going towards the fold of your pattern piece. Add an arrowhead and let's label this H B L for horizontal balance line. Here at the HBL, we need to square a line out into the width of your pattern piece. And you need to make sure that this is perfectly square. Along this horizontal balance line down here at center front, let's label this center front. Using your ruler, you can start from the C and draw along and down touching center front. And do the same thing here from the T from front and draw along and down and touch the line. Now that we've labeled our center front and we have our horizontal balance line as well as the waist and the neck, we know that this is the majority of the pattern piece that we're going to work with. The next measurement we're going to want to know is here in the chest area. From the neck, let's measure down center front three inches. And this will be our new location for the chest. So draw a short line going towards the fold 
add an arrowhead and write the word chest width. Now, with this chest width, we want to square this out into the pattern piece. And then we're going to measure the distance of the chest width out to the armhole. So this is from center front out to the armhole ridge. And the measurement is going to be 6 and 1 8. So measure out 6 and 1 8. Put a dot here on this chest width and circle it. And down here at chest width, let's write 6 and 1 8. The next location we want to find is between the chest width and the horizontal balance line, somewhere in here is our bottom of the plate. For finding the bottom of the plate, what we're going to need is go back to your paper where we found the neck to the waist and we folded it in half and we found the horizontal balance line. Take out this paper and what we're going to do is we're going to cut it right here at the neck. So again, this piece of paper is exactly from the neck to the waist. Now we want to fold that into thirds. This new thirds measurement will go from the neck, along center front, down, below the chest, and this will become our new bottom of the plate. For this new bottom of the plate, we want to square it out into the width of our pattern piece. Now for those of you who are doing this pattern draft for the very first time, I want you to put a few extra notes on here. So have your pattern upright and come down here to the chest width level. And along this guideline, let's write 3 inches down. and then go down to the bottom of the plate, and this was thirds. Now go all the way down here to the horizontal balance line, and this was half. Again, you only have to write these in if you're doing this draft for the first time. We already have the distance going from center front along the chest width out to the armhole ridge. Now what we want is we want to know where is the bottom of the plate and we want to know where is the side seam here at the horizontal balance line. I want to measure from center front out to the bust apex and also continuing here to the side seam. Now along the horizontal balance line starting from center front we'll measure out three and five sixteenths Put a dot there on the horizontal balance line, and then continue measuring all the way out to eight and three quarters for the side seam. And put a dot there, and let's circle this. Now come back here to the apex, the three and five sixteenths measurement. What I want you to do is turn this into a dark plus sign and make a larger circle around it. And then next to that, we're going to label this bust apex. And for ours, we were doing 3 and 5 sixteenths. Now, if you're doing this video for a second time and you're doing a custom draft, this is the location I was telling you where if you were going from the shoulder, armhole ridge, all the way back down to the waist, and it crosses over the HBL, that could be your bust apex point. So in this instance, we're going to use the measurement from the dress form, but when you're doing custom work, you can just use that location right there. Now come over here where the HBL went all the way out to the side seam, and we circled it. This was eight and three quarters. Up here at the bottom of the plate, 
we want to have the same measurement. So again, start with your ruler at center front along the bottom of the plate, come out eight and three quarters, put a dot there and circle it. And what we'll do is for the side seam, we can connect these two dots and also making sure that you're square with the paper. Go ahead and connect those two dots and also draw down below the waist area. Now here at the horizontal balance line, from the center front, we came out eight and three quarters. Let's write that right here. And we'll add an arrowhead pointing towards that location. Now just above that was the bottom of the plate coming all the way out here to the side seam. What we want to do is the same thing we did here at the bust apex. We have a large circle and made it a large plus sign. I want to do the same thing here at the bottom of the plate. Now the distance that we have from going from center front out here to the bottom of the plate in the side seam at the horizontal bounce line, if we were to make a shirt that landed perfectly right here, it would be way too tight on her. So what we need to do for adding a sleeve to this is we need to add some ease in this area. So there's room and ease here at the side seam. That way you're able to move around and breathe and lift your arm up. How we're going to do that is we're going to come down one inch and out one half of an inch. Now that's a standard that we'll do for all sizes. I've already done some fittings back to my dress form and a few adjustments. And I noticed on my draft for my size four, what we need to do is we're gonna go down one inch and we're gonna go out five eighths. So again, we went down one inch and we're going out five eighths, and this is away from center front. Now this new side seam location that we just found, circle that in green color pencil. Come over to the dot that we have at the chest width, six and one eighth, circle that. And then come up here to the shoulder, armhole, ridge, and circle that in green as well. These three green areas is eventually going to become the shaping for our armhole. Let's come down here and let's establish our waist shape, the side seam, as well as our dart. Come down here to the waist and let's square up four inches going into the width of your pattern piece. The next thing we want to do is we want to have a measurement from center front out to the first dart leg. And then eventually we need to know the measurement all the way out to the side seam. Take out a piece of scrap paper and fold over one of the ends and tape it in place. And let's go ahead and label this CF for center front and we'll put a, a piece of tape on there and we can use this to go measure the waist from our dress form. Now that we have the measurements, we can come back here to our draft and starting at the waist at center front, we can measure along this line for the first dart leg which matches the princess panel. In this instance, it happens to be three inches. So you can also just measure out three inches. This new dart leg will connect all the way back up to the bust apex. Draw a light line and make some of it go a little bit below the waist. Along this new dart leg, heading below the waist, I want you to measure down three-eighths of an inch and circle it. 
And over to the side here, let's write plus 3 eighths. Now come back over to center front at the waist. And along the waist, I want you to measure out half of an inch and put a dot there. Now take out your French curve. You'll notice on your French curve that there's a very quick curve and then eventually it becomes a longer curve and then eventually it becomes a straight line. So at this part of your French curve ruler, from this location on is just a continuous straight line. What we're going to do is when we're using this French curve, we're going to have the center front is going to square up with the French curve. Then we can move the French curve to eventually blend from this new dot at the bottom of that dart leg to blend back up into this dot here along the waistline. Now as we're bringing this French curve in, the French curve cannot cut going above the waistline here. So it needs to stay inside that area. So you'll keep moving it until you can connect those two dots. So the dot from the half inch closest to center and this new dot down here. The next thing we want to know is where does this waist continue to come over here to this side seam? How we're going to find this is we're going to start here at the bottom of the plate and we're going to measure down the full side seam distance. Down to the side seam at waist and I'm getting eight and three quarters. So starting from the bottom of the plate we're going to measure down this side seam eight and three quarters and circle it. Now this new location of the waist at the side seam, we can connect it back here to that new dart leg. So connect those two points and then draw a little bit extra line here going beyond the side seam. What I want to do is here at the side seam I want to add a little more room coming out this way so we're going to add three quarters of an inch. So starting from this location we're going to go out three quarters of an inch make a dot and circle that. This is going to be the new bottom of our side seam. So go ahead and circle that also with green. Now if you're doing sizes 0 through 6, we're going to add just that 3 quarters of an inch. So let's write in here plus 3 quarters. If you're going to do larger sizes, so 8 and larger, I would do 1 full inch. And if you're doing plus sizes, I would even do an inch and a quarter. Now from this new side seam with the green circle on it, we want to connect it back up to this one here. So again, we had the green circle here. It was one inch and five eighths down, one inch down and five eighths out from the bottom of the plate. This other green circle was following along this waistline and it's another three quarters of an inch going away from that original side seam. All of this is giving us more ease so when she's wearing a sleeve it's easy for her to move around with that sleeve on and the shirt will feel really nice. Let's take a closer look up here at the bottom of the plate in this new side seam. This dot that we colored in green is more important than these lines right in this area. So what I want to do is right now I just want to clean this up a little bit. So I'm leaving the dot with the green and I'm leaving this new side seam 
and I'm cleaning up all this other stuff around it. Now if you take a close look at this new side seam, it's not perfectly parallel with the, um, the dots on your paper. And this is correct. It has an angle to it. And so it should be where it's slightly angling outwards more. What I want to do is I want to have the top of this, I want to add a line to it, but I want to make sure this line is square with the side seam and not square with the dots on the paper. So take your ruler, match it up with the side seam, come all the way to the top here and square up a line for two inches. Now let's finish getting in our waistline down here. So eventually we're going to have a dart in this location. And we need to know where does the other dart leg go. For those of you who are doing the video for a second time, go ahead and take out your paper where you've measured from the princess panel out to the side seam. What we're going to do is we're going to start here at the side seam and you can measure down to that princess panel and draw a line here on the waist. Again, if you're following what all the dimensions that I'm doing, this was three and one eighth. So from the side seam, the new side seam with the green circle around it, you'll measure down three and one eighth. For those of you doing custom, you would use this measurement here. Now this becomes our new dart leg. And so you can connect this back all the way to the bust apex. Now, just so nothing gets confusing, I want to come over here to where we had drawn this line that's connecting from the waist all the way to the shoulder. And in this bust apex area, let's just erase some of that going above and below. So you can still see it down here at the waist plus the measurement that says 16 and 3 quarters. But I don't want you to get confused with this is the actual dart that we're keeping. Let's come back over here to the side seam up by the bottom of the plate. For those of you who are doing this draft for the very first time, I just want you to write plus 5 eighths right here. And this top line here that we have is square with the side seam. I want you to draw it in green. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in the armhole curve here. If we take a look at the piece that I've already completed, again, this is your center front. This is your dart when it gets closed and you've got the shaping for the apex of the bust. Then you have your shoulder slope area up here. And then we're going to draw in our armhole shaping. Basically, we already have it set up. So there's a green circle here at the shoulder, a green circle here at the chest width, and we have a green line here at the top of the side seam. We're going to connect those with our French curve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this paper towards me like this so the side seam is facing me and I can bring my French curve in here to get this armhole shaping. So we're going to have the straight part of the French curve is up here at the shoulder angle and the curved part is going to be down here at the top of the side seam. What we're going to do is we're going to match the green dots that are up high, so the shoulder and the chest width. And then you want to come down and you want to touch somewhere along this green line. Now I can rotate my paper back out and you can see here's the shaping for that armhole. 
Basically, this is everything that we need for the front rough draft. What I want to do at this point is I want to go back and double check everything. So starting from the top, we measured down 16 and 3 quarters to the waist. And then you can measure from the waist back up 14 and a half inches was the neck. From the neck, we measured down 3 inches. And that was our chest width. Halfway from the neck to the waist was the horizontal balance line and one third from the neck going down was the bottom of the plate. At the top here we measured out seven and one eighth. We drew a line for two inches. Then we did this cross crossing over measurement going from zero at the waist 16 and 3 quarters, we moved it out to that location. We found our shoulder slope. And then 5 inches, we went back here to the top line. And that gave us our shoulder angle. At the chest width, we measured out 6 and 1 8. The bottom of the plate, we measured out 8 and 3 quarters. The horizontal balance line, we also measured out eight and three quarters. That gave us our first side seam. And then here at the bottom of the plate, we went down one inch, out five eighths. Five eighths is what worked on my dress form. Usually you'll start with out half of an inch. We drew this line all the way down to the waist. Here at the waist, we came out three inches for the first dart leg. We dropped it down three eighths of an inch. At the side seam, we measured from the bottom of the plate, the full side seam all the way down, eight and three quarters. And then we connected from this new dart leg out to there. We added another three quarters of an inch. So then we connect and have our final side seam. Then we use the remainder of our waist to measure from the side seam back to have our second dart leg. The bust apex, we use the measurement 3 and 5 sixteenths from the dress form. You could also use this area where it crosses over the horizontal bounce line and make that your apex. Come over here to the side seam and there's one last thing I want to do is I want to find a notch in the middle of the side seam here. Take out a piece of paper and going from the top of the side seam all the way down to the side seam at waist. Let's fold this in half. And we can put a notch here on our side seam. And what I want to do is I want to use my ruler and I'm squaring my ruler with the side seam and I can draw that notch a little bit longer. And then on both sides of the side seams, I wanna put an S, S for side seam. So that's everything for the front draft. Go ahead and take a photo of this and submit it to me as part of your assignment for completing the video.